All right, guys, uh, in this video, we're going to do one example of solving inequalities involving a quotient, okay? Uh, so I copied the rules from the previous video uh, where we solved a quadratic inequality here. Um, so it's just going to be a little bit different. The process is mostly the same, just a little bit different, okay? Um, so first thing we want to do is move all the terms to one side. So I'm going to move the 1 over here to the left, and it becomes negative, okay? Now, in this case... Uh, this last sentence here in part one matters, okay? If the non-zero side of the inequality involves quotients, which this one does, okay, then we need to get a common denominator on that side, okay? So on the left side here, I want to get a common denominator, and that denominator is going to be 1 minus x, okay? So I'm going to multiply uh, 1 by 1 minus x over 1 minus x. That'll give me two fractions there that I can combine, okay? So we get a common denominator, now then, I can uh, combine these numerators. So I've got 1 minus 1, and I've got x minus a negative x. So that's going to simplify to 2x. Okay? Now, there's step 2 here. There's no factoring to be done. Uh, there was no factoring to be done when I was finding the common denominator. So we're just going to skip over step 2 there for now. Uh, but what we want to do, we want to understand we've got a numerator here. We want to think about what value makes that 0. Same thing with our denominator. What value is going to make that denominator equal to zero? And those two values, in this case those two, are going to help me form my intervals, okay? So what makes the numerator zero? Well, if 2x is equal to zero, then x would have to be zero. And if 1 minus x is equal to zero, then x would have to be one. So the two values that make my numerator and denominator zero are x equals zero and x equals one, okay? All right, so I'm going to use those values to help me form my intervals, okay? So remember, we're starting with negative infinity, and we're coming up to the smallest value, which is 0. So my first interval is going to be negative infinity to 0. Then I'm going to have the interval between my two uh, values here, so from 0 to 1. And then I'm going to go from the larger of the two uh, values here, 1, all the way up to positive infinity, okay? So those are the three intervals that I want to test in order to determine my solution, okay? So let's put these intervals in my table here, okay? And I wanna test against each of these factors. So like the numerator, 2x, the denominator, one minus x, and then the quotient of those two, which is 2x over one minus x, okay? So what we wanna do, remember from our previous video on solving quadratic inequalities, we're gonna pick a value in here Okay, so from negative infinity to zero, any number in that interval you can choose. And we're going to test it against the factors here. Okay, and then we'll do the same between zero and one, and then we'll do the same between one and infinity. So let's just say I pick negative one, two times any negative value is going to be negative. Okay, let's choose a number between zero and one like 0.5 or one half. So two times a half is going to be a positive value. And let's say we pick a number like 3 here. 2 times 3 is going to be positive. Remember, I don't care if these, what the value is. I just need to know what the sign of these are going to be, these test values. Okay? Let's do the same thing with our 1 minus x factor. So let's plug in negative 1. So 1 minus any negative value is going to be positive. Okay? 1 minus any number between 0 and 1 is going to be positive. And then 1 minus a number greater than 1, let's say 3 again, for example. 1 minus 3 would be negative, okay? And then finally, it's going to be whatever the sign is in the first uh, factor here divided by whatever the sign in the second factor. So a negative divided by a positive is going to be negative, okay? Well, if you look back up here, I don't want it to be negative. Well, let's go back to this one. I want it to be greater than or equal to zero. So this doesn't do me any good. So this interval is not part of my solution set. Okay? So let's look at the next interval. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. Okay? That's exactly what I want. I want it to be greater than zero, positive. So that's going to be part of my solution set. All right? And then finally here, the last interval I want to check, a positive divided by a negative is a negative. That doesn't work. Okay? So neither of these two intervals is part of my answer. So 0, 1 is going to be the solution. Now notice, I've included 0 in the solution, okay? 0 makes my numerator 
zero. Okay? That's okay. My numerator can be zero, and this or equal to in the inequality symbol makes that okay. So the zero is fine, okay? Because zero will work. If you go back to the original inequality, one plus one, uh, zero is one. One minus zero is one. One divided by one is one. And one is greater than or equal to one. So zero works in my original inequality. One, however, does not, okay? Notice all the way through the problem, if I plug in one to the denominator, I get a zero in the denominator, and that's undefined, okay? Not a real number, okay? So that's why there's a parentheses here after the one. So zero is part of the solution, okay? We include zero because it makes the numerator zero. Again, that's down here uh, in any of these places here, actually. Um, specifically here. Uh, so zero is going to be part of the solution, but we eliminate uh, one from the solution set because it makes uh, the denominator zero here and here and here and here, uh, and we can't have that, okay, because it makes the entire expression undefined, okay? So the solution set for this inequality is um, x is going to be between zero and one, including zero, but not including one.